What's up Dominators, welcome back to the Reshare channel and today I bring to you my post VEB07 No Grapper's Deck Recipe So yes, this is the recipe that I came up with uh, uh, post VEB07 as there were some new cuts added in But as you can see, this deck is actually pretty aggressive in its own way in which I'll get to later So we're gonna go through three components of uh, this deck recipe in which you can skip I'll probably put the video timings in the video description box below So do check it out if you want to skip to specific timings first we're going to go through the deck so um cut skills and all that and then secondly we're gonna go through the reasonings of why i run uh the some specific cuts in the deck that complements the deck as a whole and last but not least we're gonna go through a little bit of uh combos and skills and why this deck complements each other so much i mean why the cuts complement complement each other so much all right moving on so let's get right into it um as you can see this is the full deck the new layout will be like this from now on and I'm pretty sure you guys like it as well as do I. So it's gonna be a little bit long. Uh, so grab a drink and I've got a really good nice cup of tea right here. So let's get right into it. So first we go through the great trees, going from great tree to great zero. Uh, we run for Azure Dragon. So I don't think um you should be cutting out Azure Dragon in your deck at all. Came out in V E B O six. Yes, V E B O six as the new VR for Noraga Plus. And since then. The deck has been consist consistently rising in tiers from becoming like a, a tier 5 deck or tier 10 deck to becoming a tier 1 deck as of today. Yes, there is a lot of normal grapplers running around at my local shop tournaments uh, playing things such as Azure Dragon with Valen Spinner. There's a lot of different kind of builds running around and with the introduction of new crits that you can actually play in the deck along with uh, Kagiro and Link Joker, you can play um, more than uh, 12 more than 8 fronts now, yes, in the deck, but I choose to run crits for reasoning, so I'll get to later. But basically, Azure Dragon skill uh, on place, um, you gain a major gift XL. So yes, there is XL2 now. So XL2 actually complements the deck as well, but in terms of whether this deck should go XL1 or XL2, it leaves up entirely up to your decision because it's based on your hand, and most of the time I find myself running to XL2. So this is XL1 right here. If you want XL2, hold on. Okay, so these are the new XL2s. Uh, currently, I don't have the sign one, the Miwa sign one, unfortunately. But yes, these are the new XL2s uh, of Villain Spinner. It's basically almost the same as XL1, but it's in a rectangular shape now instead of more of a squarish shape, I would say. And you put a marker like this. So it's pretty weird, but the difference between uh, XL1 and XL2 is basically XL1 doesn't draw you a card, but it gives 10k to the rear guard on it. While uh, XL2 draws you the card, but instead of giving 10k, it only gives 5k. But it is what uh, normal grapplers and some specific uh, XL clans need. So in this deck, I find myself running uh, XL2 more often than XL1 because of a lot of force matchup, especially Kagiro running around uh, with the end and a lot of retiring power. So XL2 is still a way to go, but it depends because we're going to get through some of the cards later, which dependent on XL1 to hit higher force numbers and be more threatening. So on place, gain XL, combat 1, draw 1, call 1, and then the you card that you call, you use it to attack your opponent's vanguard. And then if the attack did not hit, you may stand the card instead. Uh, stand the card again. And then the second skill is when this unit attacks, which is the vanguard. Uh, you may combat 1 and stand one of your rearguards. That's basically the skill, but it refunds the cost of you calling the card down because it allows you to draw 1 and uh, allows you to attack in uh, main phase as well because it's a uh, auto skill on place. So it's pretty good. At the same time, it help it allows your opponent uh to actually think on whether to guard or not. But most of the time, they won't guard because they don't want the red guard to stand again. So you're probably let it hit. So it's pretty important. Moving on to the new triple R we have in VEB07, uh, Ultra Beast Deity Illumini Dragon. I like to call it Illuminati Dragon because uh, they both sound the same. But yeah, it's a joke between my friends that I keep calling it Illuminati Dragon because I don't really know the name but uh, from now on I know <clears throat> skill uh once per turn uh if it's on the vanguard circle of course when the rear guard fails to attack uh, uh fails to hit any attack or something you may count plus one stand that rear guard gives it 10k and then it attacks your opponent vanguards uh with the with an attack so it's basically 
uh, auto skill whenever your attack fails to hit. Come plus one, stand the unit, the unit gets 10k and it attacks your opponent Vanguard. So take note, only can attack your opponent Vanguard. But this procs when um, the opponent guards for whatever attack, basically you may proc it anytime, it's a once per turn. Second skill is much more important in which why it's actually really overpowered right now. Vanguard rearguard skill, take note is Vanguard rearguard. Whenever your other unit attack hits, whether it's where, where it be a Vanguard or an other unit, just make sure it hits anything on your opponent's field. This unit gains 15k until end of turn. So it's basically a free 27k, cost 12 plus 15, 27k beat stick for force cleanse at 15k guard, for XL and protect cleanse is the 20k guard in a Vanguard at 12k base or 13k base. So it's pretty much free in a sense and this is why I say this card is really really strong and one of the reasons why Nova is tier 1 at the moment and we should get to later during the combos. Alright, moving on, we got Maximum Riser. So this is the giftless grade 3 I chose to run. You can actually tag this out for, uh, uh, what's it called, Incise Riser. Yeah, Incise Riser everyone. But I pretty much uh, guarantee that I will need the pushing power um, because this deck is very, very, very aggressive based on the trigger lineup you can see. So the skill is Vanguard Regard when it attacks. If it's not boosted, it gains 10k. So it's actually a 22k stick. On uh, XL2, it's 27. On uh, XL1, is 32 so it's really really strong at the same time uh, it helps to push and with this deck running a lot of restanders so it's able to restand this unit and attack for multiple times especially when you try to a trigger especially it's a crit pump all the here you can stand this unit quite a amount of times using either azure skill uh, lumini or even uh, kiki typhoon we'll get to right now so kiki typhoon skill is basically the new um card from evil 7 and one of the reasons why this deck is really really strong because it allows you to stand one with regard for a cause of count plus one but uh, the kicker is that your, your whole front row must be uh, filled up with regards so basically if your whole front row has regards at least one regard uh, when this unit attacks, you may count plus one and then stand one of the uh, other rear guards. So you can't stand itself, obviously, because it's too strong. So uh, it's an X, uh, X skill once per turn. And there, uh, not X skill, sorry, auto skill once per turn. The other skill is whenever this unit touches Vanguard or touches an additional regard circle, so it's either XL or Vanguard, you may choose one of your other uh, one of your units and gain 5k. So you can choose himself or you can choose your other units. Ideally, what you want to do is you choose either these attackers, these three attackers or these four attackers on the XL circle to gain 5k so you can hit magic numbers. And your opponent starts starting because you can stand a lot of times, especially with a uh, Kiki Typhoon skill, Lumini skill, uh, Azure Dragon skill. So it creates a lot of pressure. At the same time, if you check a trigger, you can pump all the power to that and just swing for really, really high numbers. Is what what Nova specialty is currently now and why it's really, really good. Moving on, we got Bluetooth Jack. I think this is one of the best uh, great to rushes in the game. So and um, it's a free 19k on place, so why not? Basically during your turn continuous, this unit gets 10k, it's a 19k base unit. Put in XL2, 24k, XL1, 29k. His magic numbers against any other clan. So um the second skill is this unit cannot stand during your stand phase. So basically whenever you stand and draw that phase, you can't stand brutal jack. And in order to stand it, that's the once per turn, rest two of your regards and you may stand this unit. So it's really important to note that I know a lot of people say that oh we should run Scarlet Burst. Uh, there's what's what it's called Scarlet Burst. Yeah, just just this card basically. And the reason why I don't run it in my deck is we'll get to later. Cause I realized that there are cards that is very badly compatible with this. So uh yeah um I explain more later anyway. So but Brutal Jack. Then needless to say, it's a really strong card. You can uh, basically use it. It's a free 19k every every time you stand and hit your opponent with it. So why not? Uh, introducing a new card in EBO7 as well. Uh, not too sure his name. Uh, but people call him Michael Jackson for some reason. Because he looks like Michael Jackson. So I'll go with that. Um, first skill, Vanguard Rearguard skill. Whenever your opponent retires your Rearguard by a uh, effect of... Uh, yeah, by the, your opponent's card effects or something. So it can't be retired by, like, let's just say, your opponent hitting, uh, using their regards to hit your your, your regards and then it gets retired. No, it must be retired by a card effect or ability. You may so plus one and take that regard back to your hand. So basically what this means, it refines the cost of the retire. But at the same time, you gain the extra uh, card back so that uh, it helps you out in the next turn where you want to call down units and rush your opponent. So this good card is really effective against, let's just say, Kagero and clans that can retire units. Most mostly Kagero, yeah, Re retire units. So it allows your um 
how you say it, your needs to get back to your hand so you can have the constant amount of uh, beat sticks in your hand per se. Second skill is why it's really strong as well. When it attacks, it's an auto skill. This unit gets 3k for each card in your damage zone. So if you have 5 damage against 15k, 3 to make 4k beat stick, why not? And yeah, it's a really good card to actually put on an Excel circle. It actually does hit magic numbers if XL2 is a 29k. Assuming you have 5 damage, obviously. So take note and uh, reason run. Uh, 4 of it is because obviously it's too strong whenever you retire by Kite Facts, especially good against Kagero in the meta right now. So just so plus one and just take back the rig up. But that doesn't apply if your opponent decides to choose uh, this kind of state, so you can't just so plus one and take it back to his hand when he's retired because the ability is gone. Alright, moving on to the more OP card in this set, recent set as well, VE Build 07. Grand's Dragon, I think. I'm not too sure about the name, but basically, yeah, he's the one that actually carried the clan because you can put him on XL1 or XL2 and it can withstand for up to 3 to 4 times depending on the number of key cards you have, like uh, Kiki Typhoon, uh, Lumini, or Azure Dragon. It allows you to stand this unit so many times and he has his own self withstander. So, what's the skill? It's for once per turn, when your other unit attacks, if you have a Vanguard with Beast Deity, basically these two, not this obviously, but most of the time you ideally want to run into these two. Uh, if you have a Vanguard with BC Deity in its name, it's Sobas 1 and stand this unit for free. So yes, that's basically the cost of Sobas 1, you stand this unit and you get an extra free attack. So on an XL, 1 is 18k base, measure a number against any clan, uh, be it Force, XL Protect, is a 10k guard. But on an XL 2, it's still a 5k guard, but if you check a trigger, a critical trigger, or you stand it by Illumini effect, which gives it 10k until end of turn. Take note, it's end of turn, so it's really, really strong. Uh, it becomes a 23k or 33k with critical on it, and it's swinging, swinging at your opponent Vanguard for 2 damage consistently with 3 to 4 attacks, depending on which card you have on the board. It really creates the pressure of your opponent whether thinking whether to guard or not or just to take the damage to pray for a uh, damage trigger so that you get shut down or lower the power of uh, this unit. So really strong, I'll get to the combos later and obviously you want to run for it. Claydown mechanic, uh, yes, is the free counter charger. Basically on place, you may, uh, if you have 4 cards or less inclusive of rear guards in your hand and in your rear guards you may draw a card. So uh, the first skill is basically useless, you wouldn't want to run it at all. I, I really don't see you having a shortage of hand most of the time, but uh, yeah, with a lot of draw power and a lot of calling, hitting back, refunding, um, normal grapplers, hand size is relatively okay while having the pressure, but it does save you sometimes uh, if you're really in need of the extra card to attack. The other skill is what you use for the second skill, is whenever you counter blast one, you may retire this unit and counter charge, so it refunds back the counter blast. Basically, you can use it for any of these uh, skills, this tree right here. So, it's really important when you think to final turn your opponent when it's at 5 damage with uh, this, this, this on board. Uh, and at the same time, it helps to uh, refund back the cost and doesn't allow your opponent to damage deny you. So, you must think of the right when is the right time to actually use Claydown Mechanic. Last but not least, we have got the new grade 1 in EBO7, which is the new Sentinel. Uh, as you can see, I only run one PG Sentinel and three Great One Sentinels because I realized that I would want to run the this optimal trigger lineup which is consists of 11 crits and 4 draws. So yes, uh, Great One PG is basically the same thing as a Sentinel but the second effect is much more interesting in which uh, when placed on Mega Circle you may draw one and drop one so it's basically has the same skill as the Bermuda Great One once per turn but yeah uh, it's an on-place skill on Vanguard Circle only, so you can call it the rear guard and expect to draw, draw and draw one. But yes, this is the normal units for the deck. Right now, we're going to get into the trigger units. 4 heals, 11 crits, and... Oh, sorry, sorry. 4 heals, 10 crits, right? Yeah, 10 crits. Check out 11. 11 crits, right? My bad. 4 heals, 11 crits, and 1 draw. So, why this trigger lineup? Yes, you might be thinking, what, 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 what's with the trigger lineup? Why is it so... Aggressive, yes. I don't run three of the new draw triggers. I'm uh, not new draw triggers. The old draw triggers comes in because I feel that in order to create the pressure in this deck, you really need to drive check a crit. And if you are playing eleven crits, every drive check you, uh, you get is almost guarantees you uh actually hitting one of the critical triggers. So it's what eleven out of sixteen chance, which is almost. More than more than ten percent. I, I I don't do the math basically, but what I do know is whenever you try to check a crit with re such as brutal jack, this tree on the board, 
combined with uh, let's just say this on the board as well combined with these two vanguards is really really lethal to your opponent so that's one of the reasons why i think 11 case is the way to go that's just my personal opinion and reason why i don't run scarlet bird deity uh, getting back to the topic is because yes you do rest two rearguards with brutal jack and you may stand uh stand uh all your units on the main phase using uh this card but i don't find myself actually drawing into brutal jack a lot this clan doesn't require you to actually stand and if you have the starter in your soul this starter basically white tiger if i'm not wrong so yes you have it in your soul because i do run him um you get to draw a card but yes even though you do get to draw a card but i feel that clay down mechanic uh, is much more utilized in this deck because you are using a ton of counter blast for you to actually stand and get the multi attacks so this deck is not more of a farming hand clan where you go into you know you can farm your hand you slowly push an opponent i like to run uh this deck as a more very aggressive in a sense where you judge a crit and you hit your opponent with a lot a lot, a lot of power and a lot of attacks so they start to sweat you know and then in the end they have to take the damage and lose so scarlet bird i feel that is really redundant because even if you have uh him and you don't use his skill uh it's really useless and most of the time even you have Azure dragon even if you don't have it in hand and you have this card in hand you only can stun one regard which doesn't allow you to draw one because you need to at least stand two regards in order to draw one so i don't really feel the need to actually run this card in the deck that's why i choose to run clay mechanic because sometimes your opponent will just like to damage deny you which is really annoying in this deck where it requires so many counter blasts but at the same time you have a backup option to lie on which is these two cards this card this is a free standard for soul blast one so running scarlet bird also allows you uh allows you to not use this skill very often because it requires actually soul blast so it's quite important to keep the soul in check uh and this is why one of the reasons why i think that flows very smoothly actually talked in the tournament with this deck before so that that, that that doesn't really prove anything but yeah what i'm saying is this is my personal take on the new deck uh and why i actually run the cards so yes this is basically se segment one and two combined together so now we're going to get through the segment three which is the combos you ideally want to move on so yes let's just cut the video a little bit Okay, so basically what you want to do, let's start the video demonstration right here. So what you ideally want to do, let's just say you have a few damage in your damage zone. Let's just say you have two. Usually, if you're riding up first, to will get you high. Ideally, do one to no guard and actually get the two damage. So you ride into Azure Dragon. You open your XL. So most likely, uh, as I said before, you're going against a clan that can retire a lot. You want to go XL2, so you draw one. Sorry, anyway, let's just put it here instead. You open an XL2, you draw one, uh, cause of XL2 skill. And then you see your hand, it really flows well, especially when your hand is like this. You can activate Azure's Dragon skill first to draw an additional one. And then you call down one rear guard. So this is a very uh, decisive hand. So you see that you can make a lot, a lot of plays with this deck, but ideally you wouldn't want your opponent to check a damage trigger. So what you I like to do is actually call this card to the XL circle. And then it attacks with other dragon skills as a 5k guard. Uh, on hit, I, 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 I wouldn't be able to stand this, but probably your opponent will eat it most of the time. So they eat it, let's just say there's no damage trigger, which is really lucky. You want to call uh, either this, this, and this to the field, or you can either do that and just call Maximum Riser as well. But I like my uh, Maximum Riser to be on the Excel Circle, so you look at your hand and you have too many of this card in your hand, so why not just call it? It's a free, what? 15k be stick your opponent's probably in a 9k or 10k base so it's a free 10k guard so let's start pummeling your opponent with this so first you can actually utilize a lot of your deck to actually restand this card as i said before this card is your restander so let's attack with this counter blast you may stand this and then skill retire you may counter charge one so let's just say this is hitting for 15 for two your opponent gets 15 short two pass that's that's fine first check second check and then you hit let's just say hit the heal trigger that's pretty good or ideally you want to hit this crit trigger right here any crit trigger will be fine or any trigger at all if you hit a critical trigger it's much more dangerous for your opponent because you'll pump all the effects to here so now this is a 23k unit down to your opponent's grade 2 which is a 9k or 10k base and then obviously you have to think of attack with this unit 23k crit 2 to your opponent and then you may attack 
uh, with uh, let's just say opening guards or do or do dust whatever he has to do for damage checks. And then Karma Blast, because you have a full front row, you may stand this unit again. Swing at 23k to your opponents again. So that's how many attacks really. That's one, two, three, four, and then moving on, you can swing a rear guard with this. This doesn't have to swing a Vanguard in order to activate skill. And then in order for him to stand again, so that's one, one, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, five attacks, wait, one, one, wait, one, two, three, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, yes, that's the fifth attack, and then when this unit attacks, it's a 15k attacker, you can attack the rear guard or attack the side, depending on whether your opponent checks the damage trigger, so last one, doesn't matter what you so blast, you stand this unit again because of its own skill and it's swinging your opponent again. So that's basically seven attacks in one turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, that's basically seven attacks with the cost of two counter blasts and at the same time uh, having played on mechanic as one of your counter charges. This is why I say the reasoning of running this card is really important to rush your opponent down. And then next turn, right, if your opponent's at five damage, which he should be if you check a critical trigger. Let's just say he gets rid of uh, some rear guards, but gets rid of this rear guard, yeah, he's fine, you have another one in hand. Get rid of uh, this rear guard, uh, yeah, I didn't want to guard for him, so depending what your hand is, this is a pretty bad hand, but I didn't want to feed counter blast power here. Feed counter blast all the way to 5, that's fine. I don't mind. Uh, you takes this out, that's fine, whatever. Uh, moving on, stand and draw. So this is your hand right now. Right, Illumini Dragon, skill, gain an additional uh, XL2 right here. And then draw one. So this is your hand basically right now. It is pretty good. Maximum here. This one is to here. This is to here. And you can start farming your opponent. So your opponent's at 5 damage. First off, 5k guard. Then obviously your opponent will guard because um he's at he or she's at 5. He doesn't want to lose the game. Ah, Illuminati skill activate. Stand becomes a 23k attacker plus 10. So 18 plus 5 is 23. Attacks your opponent vanguard. Second, that's basically two waves already. All right, so let's count waves in terms of uh, mar uh, these markers right here. First wave, second wave now. So that's the second wave. Third wave, you can just swing with Vanguard. That's is fine. Swing with Vanguard. Twin drive, first check. All here, second check. So basically, you check one crit right here already. It's really devastating. Now it's thirty three k base, and you can stand for like at least two more times. So we'll show you right now. So that's the third attack right here. Uh, this can be fourth attack skill. Come on, plus one, and I'll send this. So basically, fourth attack, fifth attack. So fourth attack would be this. Now this is the fifth attack. Thirty three k two crits, swinging, plus fifteen k because you have five cards in the damage zone. So it's twenty four k be stick. You may so plus one. You have a beast deity vanguard step, and then this is the what. 5th attack, 6th uh, attack, 7th attack, swinging for 27k because uh, I is not boosted, gains 10k plus the XL marker, and last but not least, another 33k for the 8th attack this turn, and with an uh, additional counter blast open, even with this kind of field, it's deadly to your opponent, unless your opponent can survive 8 attacks, and 3 attacks of 33k waves of this card, your opponent is basically dead at this point, unless his hand size is legit, like what, 15 cards or above, you probably won't be able to survive this attack. The even better choice would be just get this out of the way and just call another one uh, of Kick Kick Typhoon, and then your opponent will truly be dead. Attack, stand this again, oh. 33k, Kick 2 again. It is so dumb and it is so consistent. As I said before, just have to dry check this card you Kai Lanka Sing Sing. We cut Ika Sing Sing to Yin Liao. Okay? So basically that's Chinese for opening one creep. Goodbye. Extend your shake handshake to your opponent. Thank you very much for playing. You have lost. So yes, thank you very much for watching this deck recipe. I know I was a bit riled up at the end because I just can't believe the consistency of this deck right now. From a tier 5 deck with perfect riser being so shit to a tier 1 deck which allows you to gain at least 8 attacks in one um, in one turn with at least 3 counter blasts open with k mechanic allowing you to counter charge so you run run out of counter blasts so this is not even, this is 8 attacks only you know I, I just performed the ninth attack right just now so that because you have 
two kick kick typhoons and make sure your front row is filled up to the brim so they can activate his skill so it's really dumb at the same time Illumini Dragon gives 10k to a unit that did not hit and it gains a free attack um, yeah this deck is just beyond consistent in the eyes of uh, almost every player right now so yeah thank you very much for watching guys I hope you guys like the video uh, it's a bit long I'll probably put timestamps along the way and edit some stuff in but Overall, uh, I'll see you guys in the next set, probably for VEBO8. I'll maybe post one deck fight of uh, GP and the new Kagiro. Uh, GP XL2 with uh, Kagiro for Stu, for you guys to see. But for now, this is VShy. I'm out. Peace.